Hello, I'm Charles Reed Anderson, head of the telecoms and mobility practice at IDC Asia Pacific. And today's mobility brief is going to talk about the enterprise mobility maturity model. When IDC decided to do a maturity model, our rationale was quite simple. We wanted to understand what phase of development the different countries in the region were at. In addition, we wanted to see which verticals were actually leading the way and which ones were lagging behind. To accomplish this, we surveyed 1,600 companies across the region in 11 different countries. And we started talking to them about a lot of different types of criteria. We wanted to understand what they do about mobility strategy. We wanted to look at the physical resources they're actually assigning to these projects and how they fund these projects. We wanted to understand what they've deployed today and what they deploy in the future. We want to know about how they're going to secure these solutions today and in the future as well. And finally, we wanted to know whether they were investing in point solutions or they started to invest in more mobility infrastructure and platforms to grow it. When we decided to break down the model, we wanted to create five distinct phases. And in the first of these, we define it as ad hoc. And ad hoc is the very earliest phase of mobility. And it's largely done without a strategy. And it's largely reactive. And what I mean by that is, it's not IT saying, I think we need to deliver X, Y, and Z. What happens is they've identified a risk. It could be that the executives are using tablets or smartphones and keeping confidential data on those devices. And they might say, well, we need a really quick and easy mobile device management solution that will help manage that risk. So that's what I mean by reactive. There's no real plan in this phase. In the next phase, it becomes opportunistic. And that's where companies start to see that there could be some value by leveraging mobility. And in this case, they might start looking at other types of solutions and applications and maybe start experimenting and developing their own. But there's no real strategy yet on how to go forward, but they will start developing that strategy in this phase. In the third phase, it's about making it repeatable, and this is where it becomes much more mature. And this is important because at this stage, companies will start to invest in the platforms, and they'll start looking for things that will allow them to grow today, but also support their future growth. And that could be supporting different types of devices, operating systems, and applications. They'll also start assigning a lot more resources to this, and that could be resources to support the internal developments, including applications. When you get into stages four and five, which is managed and optimized, this is about business transformation. Not only are you going to be talking to your internal users with mobile mobility, you're going to be leveraging it for how you interact with your external customers and changing the whole customer experience. What this will drive is transformation within your business, and it will drive competitive differentiation. It'll also allow you to be much more nimble and fast reacting to market changes and roll out numerous applications, not just for some that go across the whole organization, but very specific applications that will allow specific user groups within your organization to really aggressively deliver business value. So how did they score when we surveyed these people? Well, what you see is 57.3% came in that very ad hoc, the earliest phase that don't even have a mobility strategy. When you go into opportunistic, it's only about 11% of the companies across the region that are there. And when you get to the repeatable, that more mature phase, it's nearly 4%, which is very low. And then when you start looking at stage four and five, which are the managed and optimized phases, once again, it's just over 3% in each. And I'm sure some of you are wondering, where's the rest? Believe it or not, 21% of the companies that we surveyed were too low to even be ranked in the earliest phases of mobile maturity. So this is the challenge we face as an industry. How do we drive that forward? What we decided to do next is break that down by country so we could see which countries were actually leading the way and which ones were lagging behind. What we found is in the earliest phases, you had Thailand, which has been moving forward recently in our last couple of surveys, but is still at the bottom of the maturity model. The other countries here, China, Taiwan, and Hong Kong, you would expect to be a little bit more advanced. However, they lack the mobility strategy they lack the security implementations and the device management functionality. While these three countries love mobile devices and leverage them, it's not being leveraged inside the enterprise. In the opportunistic phase, these are the ones that are moving forward a little bit more and starting to roll out more types of solutions. And what you see is Malaysia and Indonesia starting to drive it in ASEAN. India is starting to leverage the technology as well. And then in Korea, still a little behind the leaders, but starting to make some progress there. In the repeatable phase, these are the three market leaders we see in Asia Pacific. Australia, New Zealand, and Singapore. And they're the ones that are finally starting to reach a level of maturity around enterprise mobility. And you might want to know, why are these three different than the rest? Well, the key differentiator is 
In each of these countries, the mobile operators have significant professional services capabilities to help drive the solutions forward. Whereas in some of the other countries we've discussed, they just don't have that capability. The next thing we wanted to do was look at it by the verticals and see what industry verticals are leading the way. In the ad hoc phase, a lot of these come out of the emerging markets. So in manufacturing, wholesale and retail, they're just not advancing technology. And a lot of time because a lot of their processes are, are paper-based. When you get to the opportunistic, you start seeing some maturity, um, some industries starting to leverage it, um, including healthcare especially. Even in the emerging markets, we're seeing healthcare leveraging technology to change the way that they care for the patients and interact with them. When you get into the repeatable phase, this is where it starts getting interesting because manufacturing, while low in the emerging markets, is quite advanced here. They're leveraging logistics platforms, machine to machine, and supply chain management to actually streamline their business operations. Another interesting one here is around retail, which I mentioned before that China and Hong Kong were quite far behind. But because of the shopping culture there, mobility has been leveraged by retailers to change the customer experience in store and change the way that people shop as a process. So we've actually seen them starting to drive it much more. And the most advanced, which is probably going to be expected, is financial services, but only in the advanced markets. And by this, we define you know, as Australia, Singapore, and Hong Kong lead in the way. And you remember in the previous slide, Hong Kong was ranked very low, but the dominance of the global banks sitting in Hong Kong has actually been driving this switch up. The main differentiator is they're not just using mobility for their internal operations. They're changing the way they interact with their customers, and that's driving the advancement. So when we look at this, if you're an enterprise, how do you move forward? Well, the first thing you should do is monitor best practice. So look across the industry and find out what people are doing within their mobility strategy. How are they building it out? How are they building up the infrastructure and resources to support this? How do they get funding and what types of initiatives are they engaging in? Find that and copy it. It's not always the best thing to do, but it gives you an idea of where you go to. Next one, identify the gaps in your strategy and resources. And this is very important. You need to look at your current state and your desired future state and build up those resources that will help you get there. And you might not be able to do that internally. You might need to turn to your partner community and your vendors to actually help you deliver that. And finally, on that note, find the ones that will offer you a platform to grow on. A lot of companies will come in and talk to you about a niche solution which will solve all your problems. I can assure you that it won't. You need to invest in platforms that grow for growth that will support the new devices that are going to come out, the new operating systems, as well as all those applications that you'll want to deploy. So what does this mean for the vendor community? Well, number one, you have to change the way you go to market. You need to really know your customers. And what I mean is you can't go in and talk just about selling them products anymore. You need to talk to them about the business challenges they face and how your solutions can help them deliver that. So you really need to tailor that message. And the final thing is, start advising the customers on the other facets of what they need to change to get to their future state. So don't just talk to them about the technology. Talk to them about the strategy, the investments that are going to be required, the physical resources they need to support this, and the organizational change impact that it's going to have. So I'd like to thank you for watching this video, and if you'd like to discuss it further, please feel free to contact us.